Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Janowski and I'm going to be telling you why I got beef with beef. Most of the time when someone says they eat a plant-based diet, you think, why on earth would anyone ever do that? Burgers are so good. Bacon is so good. What would I ever do without ice cream? Our entire life we've been told by our doctors that we need meat for protein and milk for calcium to grow strong and tall. And I'm here today to tell you that that's not completely true. You may be able to get all your protein, vitamins, and minerals from plants. They have virtually everything you need to grow strong and tall. Look at this bacon cheeseburger. It's the most delicious combination of creamy, crunchy, savory, most delicious thing ever, right? Yeah, right, but you know what else it has? 225 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,800 milligrams of sodium, which is 75% of what you need in a day. It also has a whopping 950 calories and 60 grams of fat. That is more than half of what your body should be ingesting daily, all in this single burger. Now, when I said before that there's 60 grams of fat in that single burger, 22 of them were saturated fat. Now let me tell you why saturated fat is one of the worst things you can have in great quantities. Fats are made out of fatty acids, and the only difference between saturated and unsaturated fat is their carbon formation shape. You see, saturated fat is more straight, while unsaturated fat has a tank in it. This allows the saturated fat to clump together more easily, so over time, the saturated fat that gets into your bloodstream can clot in your arteries and your heart, and then it can lead to blockage or even a heart attack. You don't notice this in the short term, but over one's entire lifetime, all of this saturated fat can, these tiny, tiny molecules can lead to a huge disaster. This is what it looks like. According to the World Economic Forum, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan have the highest rate of heart disease in the world. Their diet revolves mostly around meat and dairy products. On the other hand, the UN says that Japan has, the lowest, has one of the lowest rates of heart disease in the world. Now their diet is completely the opposite. They revolve around um, fresh seasonal foods such as rice, noodles, fruits, vegetables, and poultry. These are clear examples of the effect of animal protein on our bodies. Let's look at this chart. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the world. If this is such an issue, and if there's so much evidence supporting the fact that strong meat eating is directly correlated with cardiovascular disease, how come it's so encouraged by our doctors and medical authorities? Well, did you know that the American Diabetes Association is supported by Kraft Mac and Cheese and Dan on Yogurt? The American Cancer Society is supported by Tyson Foods, which is a meat production company. Susan G. Komen Foundation, supported by YoPlay, KFC. And the American Heart Association is supported by Tyson Foods, Subway, Kraft Mac and Cheese, and all of these other meat-based products. After considering this, you can think, why would these humongous nonprofit organizations tell the country not to support some of their biggest donors? Well, it's pretty clear they would lose all their donations. In the end, at the end of it, they are nonprofit organizations and they need money to stay alive, so they'll do whatever it takes to stay alive, even if it risks ours. Who here loves fast food? I know I do. It's something about that nice greasy fry, those nice greasy fries, and you get like a nice thin greasy burger on a little squishy bun. Perfect, amazing. You know what I don't love about fast food though? It's one of the biggest reasons that meat has become such an overconsumed good in America. Look at this. This is the price of an average fast food burger compared to the price of an average salad. This burger is a fifth of the price of this salad. So obviously someone's going to choose the cheaper option. But my question is, how did these burgers get so cheap? When I think of it, I would think that a cow is worth more than a piece of lettuce. Did you know that each year, $38 billion is given by the U.S. government to subsidize meat and dairy industries? Only 0.04% of that, so only $17 million, is given each year to subsidize fruits and vegetables. That is why the meat is so much cheaper than all of this produce. In 2018, the U.S. beef consumption was four times higher than the world's average. That's whack. That's crazy. Now, a big chunk of these people who think that meat should be in our everyday diet are athletes. 
athletes have this misconception that they have to eat so much more meat than the average person so that they can have enough protein to rebuild their muscles. And yes, that is true. Athletes do need more protein, but animal protein might not be the best place to get it. You see, when you have animal fat, your blood actually gets thicker, so your body has a harder time to circulate it. Then your heart has to beat faster, and this can ultimately slow down your performance. Shouldn't we feel energized after we eat, rather than feeling heavy and tired? After all, food is human fuel, and it should be giving us energy rather than fatigue. Look at Patrick Baboumian. He is one of Germany's strongest men. In 2011, he had a 441 pound log lift. I don't know about you guys, but I can't even lift 50 pounds, so that's pretty crazy. And he is 100% completely vegan. Although I do want to say that he takes a B12 supplement because that is something that can only be found in animal protein or in the soil, but people wash off the dirt from their food when they eat it. Anyway, Patrick is a clear example of how this misconception that athletes need to eat so much meat is actually false. Animal meat is not just harmful to the human body, but to the world as a whole. You know how much water goes into a single beef patty? 800 gallons. That is so much water. Humans drink approximately half a gallon of water a day. That means that this single burger patty is taking the water away from 1,600 people. Let's compare that to all of these vegetables. Lettuce takes 15 gallons, tomatoes 22, cabbage 24, cucumbers 28, the list goes on and on, but they are all significantly less than a serving of any of these animal products. In addition to wasting water, the impact of the industrial meat production on climate is enormous. A widely cited 2013 report from the UN Food and Agricultural Organization reported that 7 billion tons of carbon dioxide was released into the atmosphere from industrial animal production. That is roughly equivalent to the 8 billion tons of carbon dioxide emitted into the atmosphere from all the driving and flying of every single car, truck, and plane. When trees are cut down to make room for this industrial animal production, billions more tons of carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. This just keeps on accumulating and accumulating and adding to this, glo to this increase of global warming. Now, we have the Elon Musks of the world trying to help our environment in the future by moving away from fossil fuels, but what about simply taking meat out of the human diet. I'm not saying completely, everything is okay in moderation, but think of the impact that eating less meat can have on the entire world as a whole, bringing down climate, saving tons of water. Imagine what it could do for your body. You wouldn't have to rely on medication and surgeries to keep your heart pumping when you're older. Let's look at this comparison between the plant-based meat and animal meat. I personally love plant-based meat, but it's totally okay if you don't because it's just one of the literally of thousands of substitutions that you can use for animal meat. You can see that the plant-based meat has less calories, less fat, less cholesterol, less sodium than the animal meat, and it has more potassium, iron, and calcium. I don't know, this is just a win-win for me on the plant-based meat. There are so many options that you can choose from to eat plants over animals. Now more than ever, we have to take care of our bodies and stay strong. So here's a fun assignment for you. Try to test yourself. Perhaps start by cutting out a couple of servings of meat a week. Then maybe cut it down by three or four meals. Maybe one day you can be mostly or even fully plant-based yourself. Keep in mind that meat doesn't have to be totally eradicated. Have a burger on the 4th of July. Have your mama's homemade stew. It's everything is okay in moderation. You just don't want too much of it. Hunger is a powerful force to overcome. The ultimate way to test yourself would be to overcome that instinct or craving of meat. Although giving up a big part of your everyday diet could be challenging or even scary, it is a simple way that you can not only help your own body, but the world as a whole. Now, I could easily get started on fish and poultry, but I think I'll save that for next time. Thank you so much.